meet the rigid metal gantry, RMG, for the Voron 2.4. This project is all about pushing performance as far as possible, and today I'll show you how I designed, machined, assembled, and tested it. A bit of the backstory. This is my Voron 2.4, a machine I run almost daily. At this point, it has made hundreds, maybe thousands of printing hours. A couple of weeks ago, one of my Z belts snapped. And instead of just fixing it, I decided this was a perfect excuse to do something more interesting. A full gantry upgrade using parts that I will design and machine myself. At the same time, I started talking with Isaac Tech about putting together a kit. He designed an absolutely incredible motor driver called Ouroboros. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. So some goals were made especially to make future collaboration possible. In case you are new to the DIY printers community, the Voron is a fully open source 3D printer that anyone can build using off-the-shelf parts. You've probably seen it featured on popular YouTube channels, or maybe you already have one sitting on your bench. It's backed by a passionate community of makers who are always happy to help with building, tuning and modding these machines. For this project I wanted to build new gantry focused on pure performance, so it should have. 9mm belts, wire rails moved inside the gantry, shorter belt paths, live shaft idlers instead of fixed toothed idlers. Before diving into each choice, I want to address something obvious. You might be thinking, wait, I've seen this before, isn't this basically the monolith gantry? While I didn't use any monolith CAD files, the underlying ideas are the same. Designs like monolith, Wizibot, and mammoth proved those principles work, and without them, RFG probably wouldn't exist as well. Now let's break down the design decisions. For 9mm belts it is straightforward. Moving from 6 to 9mm belts increases stiffness and reduces belt stretch, which directly improves motion performance, especially when you're trying to push high accelerations with dual motor gantry. Now let's talk about inside Y rails. I'm not a mechanical engineer, so take this with a grain of salt, but there is my reasoning. With the traditional layout, the tool head's center of mass sits above the plane of rails, on the short arm. During acceleration, this creates a torsional moment that can slightly flex the XY joints and they would act as a small spring. By moving the rails inside the gantry, we would achieve no arm on XY joints, less torsion and less flex, more evenly loaded carriages, better structure alignment between the Y-beam and rails. My assumption is that this layout should reduce vibration and improve input shaper performance. Short belt pass means less total belt stretch, reduced backlash, lower opportunity for vibration. This design also reduces the number of moving elements, especially bearing stacks, compared to a stock gantry, which should further improve rigidity and motion smoothness. Stock Warren uses fixed two stylers. They work great at normal build tensions, but once you start increasing tension and load, the small internal bearings become a weak point. The solution here is live shaft stylers. The other stays fixed on the pin. The pin itself rotates on larger bearings. This moves bearing overload and improves long-term reliability. Some designs use motor shaft idlers with set screws mounted on a pin, but in my testing this method affects concentricity and takes more space. Since I was making everything from scratch anyway, I have designed custom press-fit idlers sized to match standard bearing stack. They mount directly onto the pin, no set screws, and maintain excellent concentricity. I assemble them together using a 3D printer jig on my hydraulics press. This is the final design I landed on. Most of the motor and idler placement was driven by existing Z-belt locations. Because of this, the AB mounts moved slightly backwards, meaning they no longer fit perfectly in a stock V2.4 frame. I will solve this later with thicker foam or small printed back panel inserts. The belt tensioners live at AB mounts. I would have preferred tensioners at the front idlers, like in stock gantry, but achieving that would have increased belt length. 
which I wanted to avoid. Instead, tension is adjusted from the front of AB mounts and allows about 10 mm of travel, which work well for reasonable tension. XY joints are pretty simple. They build from three machined parts, a central block that mounts directly to the carriage and also top and bottom plates that are mounted afterwards. Front idlers are nothing special as well. They run bearing stack with live shaft idler and have additional mounting point on the side. I wanted to show you the full machining process, but unfortunately my SD card died and I lost all of the footage. All I have is this short clip recorded on my phone. The parts you see now are professionally machined and anodized, but before those arrived I had already made two prototype sets myself. First set was finished literally the day before Warren Weiss event, where it went straight into a giveaway. I managed to install it, do quick tests, pull it apart and pack it. All in one evening, I only have some pictures that you see at the moment. Second set went straight to another tester, again without me even installing it first. Assembling plan is next. Build all components individually, then assemble full gantry on my desk, install the complete gantry into the printer. No lock tight at first, I want to verify everything before locking it down. Everything went very well up until this point when I realized that holes on my parts are wrong size. But nothing drill cannot fix. Now it's time to install the gantry onto the printer. The design allows mounting the motors either facing up or facing down. I decided to go with motors up for this build. I'm setting the gantry onto the rigid Z mounts, but I'm not tightening the screws yet. I want the whole gantry to float slightly so I can square it later. My Z idler design allows me to route the belts onto the pulleys and clamp them in place before installing the tensioners. This is super convenient because I have shortened my belts more than needed. Before installing the X-beam, I need to add the connectors to the Y-rails. And with that done, it's finally time to drop the X-beam into place. After squaring, time to tighten all screws and install motors. I am going to use A42 tool head using my own custom mount. This mount supports 6 and 9mm belts, both normal and inverted belt layouts, and also makes belt pretensioning easier. I was about to install the belts when I realized the XY joints were assembled the wrong way. Instead of taking the whole gantry apart again, I took the laser rod and reassembled them in place. For the belts I have followed the usual Warren method. Install one belt. Cut it to the lens and remove. Use it as template for the second belt. After the belts, I install pre-assembled tool head onto its mount. At this point, it's important to double check that no wires are pinched, bent or damaged during installation. Finally, all hardware is installed, so I have eyeballed belt tension and it was time to test. I probably should have checked the end stops here, but I wasn't patient enough, so I just sent it. X and Y steppers first. Homing Z for the first time is always scary. Surprisingly, I had no crashes. Success. Most people would print something first, probably. But I went straight to Input Shaper. Oh, 
Okay, should admit avoiding Loctite was a bad idea. With two screws missing and zero tuning, results were already decent. I used Kraken motors powered by 48 volts and 2.4 amps current. After that, I put missing screws back in, increased the belt tension and run input shaper again. The X-axis results stayed mostly the same, but Y-axis improved even more. I was ready for the second test, so I printed the same Warren cube I've run on this machine before, but with much more aggressive settings this time. In Clipper I increased acceleration to 2000, pushed the speed to 35000, and set the speed factor to 400%. That made it my fastest cube ever, 12 minutes and 53 seconds. I was so excited during the run that I completely forgot to turn on the camera, but luckily I managed to grab few clips on my phone. Yes, the cube is far from perfect, but considering this was done with zero tuning, the results really aren't so bad. At this point, I think I'm already getting pretty close to the limits of the extruder, hot end and cooling setup. That's it for today. If you're interested in trying this gantry yourself, you can use the Notify feature on my website. I still want to run more testing and finish proper documentation before releasing it for purchase. While you're there, you can also check out some of my other designs, including live shaft idler version of the XY joints for the classic gantry. In a future video, I'll focus entirely on tuning this setup and pushing performance even further, so if that sounds interesting, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.